All right, so in the video today, I want to go over some of the TikTok hacks that I've seen that relate to migraine treatment. And when I saw some of those, it was very interesting because some of them made sense to me and others did not. So in this video today, I want to go over these hacks and see which ones are legit and which ones are not. So let's get started. The first one I want to go over is basically a hack that I saw where people are putting clip over their eyebrow. Put a claw clip on my eyebrow and help my migraines. So there's a viral video going on about it. So girl. they're putting a clip over their eyebrow when they're having a migraine attack and they claim that that essentially helps alleviate their pain. So what's the idea behind that and is it legit or not? If we look at this model right here, you're going to notice that above the eye you have a couple of yellow nerves right here that is called the supraorbital nerve. And then another smaller one that's called supratrochlear nerve. But essentially those are both branches of V1, which is one of the main branches of the trigeminal nerve. So all of this stuff in yellow that you see right here, all of that is actually the trigeminal nerve. And it has three branches. It has V1, V2, and V3. And so V1 is what you see in yellow right here as being the supraorbital and supratrochial nerves. Now, these are implicated in some migraines. They're not implicated in all migraines. As I'm sure a lot of you know, some people get their migraines in the front, some people get them in the temple, some people in the back of their head. So for people who actually get migraines in the front, then this nerve a lot of times can be implicated. And so alleviating the pressure on that nerve can actually help with the headaches. Now, why is it that that eyebrow hack can potentially be legit? Well, the idea behind it is basically that when you are alleviating some of that muscle tension that is tugging on the nerve, that can potentially help alleviate the pain. Now, I want you to think about this in a little bit of a different way. So one of the most common procedures that we do for migraines is actually Botox injections. And one of the things we do in Botox injections is that we actually inject that tiny muscle right here, which is called the corrugator, and we inject frontalis. And the idea behind that is that we are trying to decrease the spasm and the tugging that happens on those tiny nerves. So in a much more DIY kind of way, basically putting an eyebrow clip right here can potentially help because basically it's doing the same thing that Botox would do. Maybe not as good, obviously, but it's potentially doing that. And it's alleviating the pressure on the, on the nerve and that can help. So overall, if I were to say whether or not it's legit, I would say it is. So if you're running out of options and you really have no medications at home and nothing else working, then it may be reasonable. But again, remember, it will have a much higher chance of working if your headaches are actually frontal, right? So if your headache is only in the temple or the back of your head, then I, I really don't think this is going to help. All right, moving on. The second hack that I want to talk about is salt. Now, I've seen some videos on TikTok. You know, like when you get a headache, we need Celtic salt. Where basically you have somebody trying to put salt under their tongue and claiming that pinch of salt is basically sufficient to cure headaches and cure migraines. And I disagree with that. Now, salt, I think, has a role to play if you have hyponatremia, which is low sodium, right? Then in that case, it's reasonable to consider salt, but obviously you need much more than just a tiny bit under your tongue. However, for general migraine pathophysiology, there's really not so much in terms of role for salt. Migraine is a very complex disorder that includes inflammation. It includes changes in blood vessel diameter in the brain. So these blood vessels basically here, the cerebral blood vessels, they are the ones that kind of clamp down and then they dilate. And that has definitely a role to play in migraines. The trigeminal system, so the trigeminal nerve and its actual correspondent inside the brainstem has a big role to play. You have the cortical spreading depression that has a role to play in aura formation, right? The visual aura that a lot of people get with migraine. So all of those are definitely key and involved in migraine physiology. Not so much low salt. So low salt doesn't really correspond with migraines in terms of mechanism. And as far as treatment goes, just a pinch of salt under the tongue is not really going to make that much of a difference. And so I don't really expect that to help. Now, some people would argue that the salt, if it's Himalayan salt, that it might potentially have minerals that can help you with the migraine. And, you know, for that, the only thing I'm going to add is that, yes, mineral salt can potentially contain magnesium, which is definitely something that can help with headaches. We use it actually a lot in pregnancy because it's safe. However, the dose needed for that is usually about 400 milligrams of magnesium daily, right? Now, the dose that is in a tiny little pinch, you know, that you're putting under your tongue or in your tongue, that's basically barely like 10 milligrams, 
of magnesium. So really nowhere near the amount you would need to actually be therapeutic enough and help with the migraine. So overall, when it comes to that hack, I would say no. It's a fail. It's BS. It's not legit. Moving on. The next hack that I want to talk about is basically a hack that some people claim that eating french fries from McDonald's and a Diet Coke can potentially stop their headache. Everybody knows that a McDonald's Coke and fries is the cure to a headache, but do you actually know why it does So that? let's see if there's any truth to it. When it comes to the french fries and the Diet Coke, there's a few things to disentangle here. The first thing is the Diet Coke. So the Diet Coke does have in it caffeine. And caffeine can sometimes help with headaches. So we do use it actually in Fioraset, for example, which is a medication that we use for combination of caffeine with Tylenol and Butalbital or something different that can potentially help with headaches. And then we also have Excedrin, migraine, that has also caffeine in it. So caffeine can definitely help at certain doses with certain types of headaches. So I can potentially see that. Now, in terms of the French fries, I don't think it's the french fries per se, I think it's really more about eating. So there was a study a few years ago that looked at the triggers for migraine, approximately 2,000 participants. And what they found was that, you know, even though there were different specific foods that can trigger migraines, like chocolate, cheese, alcohol, and other triggers. However, the number one thing that was much more commonly linked with headache triggering was actually fasting, so not eating. So that was a much bigger trigger for migraines than any of the combined different foods, right? So, you know, you could argue that if somebody is having a migraine, they're in pain, maybe they're not going to have too much of an appetite to eat and they're fasting, so that's exacerbating their migraine. Or maybe even it could be that the fasting or not eating triggered their migraine in the first place. And so eating anything really, not necessarily French fries, might potentially help with that with that headache and to break that cycle. However, obviously, if you're in pain and having a headache, which one is more appealing? Is it going to be Brussels sprouts or broccoli, or is it going to be French fries? So that's why it makes sense to potentially, you know, try something a bit appetizing that you might like and that you have a lower threshold to try when you're in pain and maybe nauseated from the migraine itself. Now, I'm not advocating for people having French fries and Diet Coke. Obviously, you know, consistently it's not healthy to do that. But I think that there's a little bit of a grain of truth behind it. And so I would put that one as a maybe. So it's definitely not BS, but it's also not something that I would recommend strongly. So in between. All right. And now the last one that I want to talk about is a hack that's also pretty common on those TikTok videos. And that's basically immersing your feet in warm water. If you get really bad migraines, this video is for you. There's a cold front coming in and my head is... And so the, the rationale behind that one is basically that by applying the heat to the feet, that potentially will lead to vasodilation. So to understand the mechanism behind this for both parts of it, you need to understand the effect of heat and cold on blood vessels, right? So when it's cold out there, and let's say it's snowing outside, what happens usually to your blood vessels? They're going to vasoconstrict, right? So they're going to get narrower. And you know that because your skin might uh, get pale or bluish, right? So less blood flow. And then if it's warm, then you're going to have vasodilation. And, you know, that's why you feel the flushing sometimes and, and things like that. So basically, if you put your feet in warm water, that can potentially lead to vasodilation in the legs and in the lower body. And so a lot of the blood will now go in, those, in that direction. And that will shunt some of that blood away from the brain, right? And therefore, it might shunt some of the inflammatory mediators away from the brain. Similarly, if you apply cold or ice in the head and neck region, what might happen is potentially is that you're going to have decrease in the blood flow inside the brain. So the blood vessels leading to the inflammation that happens and the rush inflammatory mediators like the CGRP and things like that, all of that is going to decrease potentially with ice or cold application. And that can be hypothesized as a mechanism for why applying cold or ice might help. Now, one thing I will mention is that triptans, which are one of the most common migraine medications that we use for rescue, work that way. So basically, they, they do work on the blood vessels and they make them narrower. So they have vasoactive properties. And that's also why they are contraindicated for people who have had a heart attack or a stroke, because they can potentially narrow the blood vessels. So... You could argue that maybe that is playing the same role, but maybe on a much smaller level or smaller effect. 
but potentially that could be a hypothesis for why why that could work for some people. Again, not for everybody, but for some people and for some headaches. And probably some timing has to do with it too, right? Just like with the triptans, if you take a triptan at the beginning of a headache, it's much more likely to help as opposed to, let's say, if you were to take it two hours later when the blood flow has already rushed and brought in all the inflammatory mediators with it. Similarly with, you know, the cold. So it could be that maybe at the beginning of the headache, it might help. But if you do it three hours after the headache onset, maybe not as effective. All right, that's all I got for today. I hope you found this useful. If there's any other hacks you've seen, send them my way and then I'll make another video on those.